A billion people in the world have no access to electricity. The electrification rates in East Africa, on average, are below 30%. And so that ultimately is the challenge that we're trying to address. Originally, what has been seen as Africa's disadvantage is now creating an opportunity for us to actually revolutionize the way energy is generated and delivered. With the traditional utility model, it's estimated that East Africa will achieve 80% electrification in about 35 to 40 years. That's a long time. <laughs> The traditional grid model and even large-scale capital solar programs require governments to motivate and raise large sums of capital and install major infrastructure and transmission. And these systems are going to take 20, 30, 40 years to reach the last mile of the population. Whereas with decentralized solutions, as soon as a consumer has that first 10 or 20 dollars, they can start to reap the benefits of modern energy access. So that's incredible. The widespread adoption of certain technologies, particularly smartphones and mobile money, have really permeated the population. And the grid has not grown at the same rate as these technologies. And so entrepreneurs have been looking for ways of leapfrogging the grid so that these people can really be able to use that technology and thus improve the quality of their life. East Africa sits at an amazing intersection to pioneer the growth of decentralized solar energy. First, there's abundance of sunlight. Second, technology has come to a place where it is sufficiently low cost that it really is affordable to smallholder farmers. And third, mobile money has created enough capital access that people can start to pay now in incremental ways that open up access today. Western Kenya has blessings. We have access to sunlight, very bright sun. That gives us free energy. And then we have the community. They help each other out in case of problems. They believe in the aspect of togetherness. And they're like, yeah, we can empower ourselves. mtu akiingia atashindwa na Irene Stima hakuna Kenya Power imepotea na yeye bado hako na taa it serves as a security you can live on the radio it talks someone thinks you are in yet you are far far away <laughs> so thieves cannot just enter they will fear you go into these communities and go to these places where there's actually no energy at all, where the view of the world at night is so restricted and so narrow, and where you're sort of living around shadows. When all that goes away, it's transformative. The immediate benefits to the consumers are obvious. It extends your day from 12 hours to 16 or 20 hours, and that's a lot of valuable time. Kids can stay up later studying, you can listen to the radio, you can keep your cell phone charged and stay connected. Once installed, you know, you, you don't pay anyone else. That is you, it's free energy, you know. You have a radio, maybe you have a TV, you have lights in your house. No, it's an amazing thing. As we think about the marketplaces of the future, a grid in the sky, a decentralized solar grid that is cheaper, that allows individuals to control their access to electricity and maybe someday trade that electricity with other individuals, opens the possibility of what free solar energy can provide. What we feel is that solar, it's gonna create a new model for how people uh, access energy. And that's what's so interesting to think, that there's an opportunity to rethink in the next generation of grids, a new grid.